Yo, yo. Hey. Make way for the bets when it takes all. Changing my ways, let me break off. Not faced by the days of the fake walls. No boundaries, let's take off. I'll digress, it's priceless. Swear I'm alive and I'm lifeless. Living in my brain, washed up, taking more than before. Feel the pain, but I still take more than I can digest. But it ain't shit. Still I'm blessed. School sucks. Still I'm stressed. Add that to the fact that my friend hung himself and his dad walked in to lose my belt. That's fucked up. Still I smile. Short ass life. Make it wild. Some twist the weed, some twist the vow. But I doubt this shit gon' make you smile so fast. Fuck you, that's why I said it cause I love you The breed is something that you must do The mic's who I feel I should talk to Cause that shit don't really talk back All things inside I don't need that Cause most of you kids can't see that I really couldn't care about the feedback But I'll leave that alone Gonna sit with this pants till I'm home This world got my heart made of stone But I'll mask it, go cover your thoughts in plastic Man it won't shine, it really is a minute but got no time Thoughts deep down like road tide But I bounce back up, got past that shit like a road sign So I stumble on, I ride the beat Hole is a dream still incomplete Cause I'm not yet close where I need to be Check the whole world looking for some decency Won't find it Hard to navigate when you're blinded Stress from the back like sirens But I ain't gonna stop till the good lord close my eyelids And I'm ghost I'm ghost I'm ghost This be the realest shit I ever wrote Just believe, the way the big you see is only better from here. Don't you stress yourself to breathe, put your mind at ease. The way the big you see is only better from here. Time is all you need, homie. Just believe, the way the big you see is only better from here. Don't you stress yourself to breathe, put your mind at ease. So today, I've got a lot of things I want to cover that I want to let you know that I'm doing and you should be doing. So mainly I'm going to talk about the warm up a bit. I'm going to show you my whole session, my strength session. Um, so what we're going to be talking about is mobility work, activation work, um, then contrast sets, um, talking about RFD, uh, elastic um, energy, uh, which is involved within the contrast sets. May seem confusing now, I'm gonna explain it in further detail. But anyway, on the bike, 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, just to get warming up. Five to 10 minutes on the bike, then onto the foam roller. Okay, 10 minutes done on the bike, foam rolling. Get one of these, everyone. Honestly, I went on eBay the other day, I bought one for a friend, 10 euros, 10 pound, free shipping. Like, you have no excuse to not have one of these. I highly recommend for recovery, for this study's shown that before you do exercise, you use the foam roller. It, um I've also seen a recent study as well, if you post-workout or post-exercise, you use the foam roller and roll out, it benefits your muscles. I can't remember the exact thing on it. I'll have the study on the screen now. I forgot, but um, foam roller, key. If you want to see my foam rolling routine, it's still the same. Click the link, the video right here, right now, and have a watch. I'm not going to go through it all because it takes a while. Okay, so we're now moving on. I've got some notes here. I wrote down some notes for this video. Um, activation work, prehab work, mobility work. So I want to get the definition right on here. Prehab, 
Prehab is basically you're preventing an injury. Um, so the muscles in your body that are most vulnerable to injury, we want to strengthen them and stabilize them. So during the season, you're not getting these little niggles, these little injuries that are going to put you out because gym is great, but the aim of the game is to be on the field, which is what we want. If you're not on the field, you can't perform, you can't do the gym work, you can't, what you do in the gym needs to get onto the field. That's what I'm trying to get at. So you need to do this prehab work every session. I'm going to show you that. That ties in with mobility work. So the reason why we do mobility work mainly for our upper body, we're going to do it for our shoulders. The reason why we do that is because we want to enhance our kind of flexibility, basically the mobility we have. So we can perform movements better in the gym, on the field. For example, if you, when you're doing your sprints, if you have more flexibility in your quad and hamstring, you can have a further range of movement, which means you can cover ground more quickly, which means you can sprint faster, basically what I'm getting at. And activation work, which is the last one, um, before you do a workout, you need to recruit the muscle fibers. So if you're hitting chest, your body needs to know you're hitting chest. So you need to do a few exercises that get the brain and the muscle connected, the neurons to be sent between each other to basically get the most bang for your buck is what I'm trying to say. So if you're doing legs, uh, say you do some, you don't do any activation work, when you squat, your glutes aren't gonna be 100% getting the full effect and working so maybe your quads might work more, your hamstrings might work more. Whereas if you do some glute bridges or something, uh, just maybe 15 or 20, your glutes are already fired up, ready for exercise, they're activated. So when you squat, they're gonna be, they're gonna be 100% fully used. So you're gonna get the full effect. If that makes sense, I tried to clear it up, make it more easy to understand. I think I've covered everything. Um, I have. What we're gonna start with, I've done this in my videos before, um, but this year, this kind of from now on, I'm focusing way more on activation, mobility, and prehab work before my session. A lot of people have bad shoulders in rugby, so we are going to work on mobility, some activation work. No, activation work after, mobility, prehab work for the shoulders now. So I'm gonna show you my routine. Okay, so we're gonna start. Get yourself a band, uh, a TheraBand will work that you get from the physio. One of these, you can buy them, they're 10, 15 pound or a TheraBand, any physio will give you one, you could probably buy some off them, these are cheap. Whichever you want to use, doesn't matter. Okay, so we're gonna start here, you're gonna bring it over your shoulder and you're gonna pull apart. Over the shoulder, pull apart to the back. Pull apart, down to the front. Pull it apart, see I'm, I'm not just doing that, I'm pulling the band. So that's one, you're gonna do 10 of these. Speed it up. Okay, once you're done 10 of them, next exercise. Okay, now, again, with Thank this band. I'm oh, filming! <laughs> filming. Right, okay, again, with one of these, or a TheraBand. See you later, I love you. You're gonna put it around something, so love you've got... Again. It's kind of little. Right, we're gonna grab it from the sides, like this. So you've got a bit of a movement here. You're gonna bring it to your forehead, rotate up, press, like so. I'm going to give it low so you can see. Rotate, press. Break to the forehead, rotate, press. Ten of these. Okay, now, that one's a burner. So between the first two exercises, give yourself a minute to pull the shoulders down, you know what I mean. Anyway, next one. Same position. We're going to grab wide. Like so, bend over a bit, I'm gonna pull. Like so, again, 10 reps. <sighs> so, by now, your traps will be fired up. Your delts a bit, we're gonna work on some rotary cuff work now. We're gonna get the band like so. We're gonna put our heel on it, like that. And we're gonna put it up behind us, so we're in this position. Can you see? Okay. We're gonna lower slowly and bring it back up. Lower slowly, bring it back up. Let's angle. 
We're going to do 10 of these. Same setup, other side. Place it on your heel. Bring it over the back. Put it down. Slowly. 10 of these. Done. Next exercise, final one for our shoulder mobility and prehab work. You're gonna wrap it around something. Everyone does, everyone's done this. You're gonna rotate. What you want, uh, what I want you to focus on this, this is easier. You're gonna dig your elbow into your side and make sure you're just moving your shoulder. I don't want a gap here because you get too much movement. Dig it in, rotation. You don't need to go all the way like this, you're gonna snap your shit. Just here. The wrap around there. See, just a small rotation is good enough. And that is shoulder mobility, a bit of prehab work done. Now we're gonna go into more prehab work and activation. We're gonna be using our back in today's session, so we need to get that warm, get that going. So I'm gonna do a few stretches you should be doing in your workout. Okay, now, we're gonna, now we've done the floor stretches for our back, gonna move on to a bit more further stretching. Using one of these bands, uh, I got this off my protein. So I'm gonna wrap it around the bar like so. I'm just gonna get a full stretch on. So we're gonna put as far as we can and hold. Like so, really feeling the stretch on your lap. Hold for 10 seconds and change. 10. There we go. Now some chest uh, stretching. A few of these just to get the chest stretched and warmed up. Simple exercises. Then find yourself a side bar kind of thing. Grab onto it, put across for the stretch in your pec. Pectoralis major, the stretch is for. Again, 10 seconds on one side and then Turn on the other, like so, really stretching, that's a better angle, right across. Don't push too hard, we don't wanna, we don't wanna snap ourselves. And after that, get behind your back like so, on the side, and then push. You'll feel it right on the side of your pec, your pectoralis minor. Again, 10 second hold. And then we are going to change, give you a better angle from the back, right there. And we're pushing forward. <laughs> right, so we've got our back stretched, chest stretched. We have also done a bit of shoulder mobility and also shoulder stretching was involved in that work. We've done some prehab work for our shoulders. We are now going to get into some more activation work. In my next video, I will do some more talk and work on prehab exercises. I haven't fully researched the kind of prehab exercises I personally need. So there's not, there's not a perfect prehab work you can do. There's general ones you can get for your whole body, but it's really dependent on you. So prehab for my shoulders is very important because obviously we do a lot of tackling, so I need that prehab work um, just to sort out the little niggles, uh, make sure I'm strengthening those and st stabilizing those vulnerable points in my shoulders so that's very important for me um, I also need to be doing some uh, prehab work for my knee for my ankle everyone should do ankle and knees they're very important easily injuries to pick up especially in your ankle and your knee is a very serious 
injury if you ever get one. So prehab work must be done on both. When it comes to a leg day, I will put that in. I want to do upper body focus today, so I'm not going to put it in today. Um, anyway, this is a long, long intro warm up, but uh, I want to express the importance of really warming up. So now we're going to do some activation work and pillar prep. Let's go. Ah. Okay, so a quick basic starter we're going to do. Um, all we're doing is one set of each exercise. So we're going to start off with a plank, um, 30 seconds hold on each station. Uh, the core needs to be activated. You use it all the time in majority of your exercises, if not all of your exercises. So we need to make sure it's fully activated. So start off with a normal front core, 30 seconds on the clock. Before I continue, a quick tip for your plank. For planking like this, a tip is push your back out a tiny bit. You will feel it in your core a lot more. Quick little tip. Right, next, onto the side. <coughs> onto the side. Change. What are you going to do? Magic trick. Uh, you're going to put a, like grip like this. There's a gap you'll feel when you push like that. You can feel it. I'm just going to push out like so. Side angle. Push out. Push out. It's a, I got it from uh, the prehab guys. It's a kind of a pain relief exercise. So you do 10 each side before your workout. And I have felt a benefit, not a massive hugescent pain benefit, but it does help a bit. Next, activating the chest muscles. Get yourself the band again. Put it around the back. And we're just gonna prep, oh, sugar, not like that. Like this. Press. I'm just gonna press like so. Might be easier with a heavier band, you feel more of an effect. But just recruiting those muscle fibers. When you get to the top, squeeze your chest, keep pushing through. Give about 10 or 15 so of those. And we're going to change flies. Like so. Okay. okay. All right. So, done some pushes, done some flies. We're going to also, we need to warm up our arms. We need to warm up our back. Um, a good one, instead of using a band, if you don't have one, you can go and use the cables here. And you can just grab the cables, light work and just do some reps like that. Um, again, it's good activation work. Anyway, on to the back. Also, I just wanna say for the chest as well, when we go to the bench, when we do about 20, 15 reps with a bar, that's also activation work. Anyway, back. Gonna do some lap pull downs. Pull downs, pull overs. So here, we're just gonna pull like this. Keeping your arms dead, a tiny bend, but your arms stay straight in that position. Like so. If you find it hard to feel that kind of movement to get the full, like, feeling your lats in it. Onto your knees here. I feel this kind of helps as well. Just like this. Watch my arms, how there is, just the, it stays in that position. I don't, I don't come and bend for a tricep movement. I keep them straight like so. 15 to 20 reps, you would definitely, definitely feel activation in this. Done. Last couple of exercises. Get yourself a band. Stand on it with your foot. Just do some curls. 15 each side. Then for the triceps, what I do, I grab both sides, put it around my back, just extend. Boom, all done. Uh, an exercise I just remember now, I forgot to put in for the shoulders earlier. Grab the band, like so, well it's for your rear delts activation. You're just gonna put it like that, slow movement, put it out, control the movement back in. 100% you will feel this in your rear delts. Add that one in, sorry I forgot about that. There's a lot of talking so I hope you're taking it all in, or rewatch the video. Hmm. Boom. Um, 
I believe we're all finished. We can now, now, we can start with a workout. Once John arrives in a minute. I'd like to add another, another exercise onto the activation. Um, I know this is, a, you may seem a lot, but you're only doing one set of each. So I like to try and get two exercises per body group or even more um, for shoulders. So after we've done the lap, we're gonna do some inverted rows. Like so. Focus on keeping your body like a plank of wood, dead straight. Control the movement down. And so, 12 reps on that, um, and we're 100% finished. Uh, you can add in some diamond push-ups, which will help activate the arms, activate your triceps a bit more and the chest a bit more, if you feel you need it. But um, I hope that's clear, it's a lot of talking, I'm sorry. It's not very organized, but I will be coming out with a, a prehab kind of sheet that will cost just around five pound. I'll write it up and sell it to you guys. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. Okay, so now we're gonna start getting warmed up for the bench. I've done 24, 25 reps just on the bar. Now I'm gonna do 20 each side, 12 reps. I'm gonna keep going up. Like so. Making sure we're warming up, you guys gotta make sure you go through each kind of weight. Don't just go in from, right, 80 on the bar, let's go. Go through the stages, you gotta build your body up to get to that working set, so do your warm up sets. Um, also, I was, I was watching, a, I was following a guy on Instagram, he's a great strength and conditioning coach, I forgot his name, link in the, in the description box. Um, he does this uh, method, it's like neck off the bench method, um, so, see how my head was lifted off? Or you put your head to the end of the bench, so it's off the edge. Um, and basically, that you get, words, words, words. Um, you're enhancing the strength in your neck. It also helps a bit of a core work as well, because there's no support with the neck. So you've got to lift your neck up and you've got to push. Give it a try, uh, I've tried it recently. Find it to be quite beneficial. Okay, set one is 105. I wanted to go 107 point five but we don't have 1.25s here so see how this is if i feel comfortable i'll go to 110 we're supersetting this with a uh, medicine ball chest passes uh, probably one hand this is contrast training i'm going to explain this as i do it in a voiceover Okay, so as you can see here, I'm doing a medicine ball chest pass with just the one hand, as opposed to using the two hands because I've used bench two hands and I want to contrast it with one hand due to enhance the strength and power in individual hands rather than the two because one side might be stronger than the other. This is called contrast training. Contrast training is gonna build your explosive strength. It's performing an explosive movement directly after you've done a heavy resistance exercise. So our heavy resistance is the bench press we're doing now. So this is also known as PAP training. So post activation potentiating training. So it's gonna increase your explosiveness in the high velocity movements. So there's two different variations you can do of contrast training. We've got RFD, which is rate of force development. Um, that's basically from a standing start. So say, as, as you can see the video, I'm in a standing position and I'm accelerating forward. I'm not bringing the ball back, I'm not moving. It's from a steel position. We've also got elastic explosion, explosiveness, sorry. Um, so that's when you're kind of going through the short cycling, stretch shortening cycle. So if I take it into what I'm doing now with the medicine ball, if I started it in front of me, I pulled the ball back and then I extended forward and pushed the ball, then that would be elastic explosiveness. So I'm going through that stretch shortening cycle because I'm flexing my muscles before the movement. So there's two different types. So we're doing RFD today. That is contrast training. Push, 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 push. Fuck. You're a fucking beast, man. 
Okay, so we've done three sets of five on the bench. Um, standard, simple kind of sets. Um, I don't want to explain too much in this video, so in terms of the way I'm going to program bench. I know in the last video I talked about um, super maximal training. Um, I did that for my four weeks, um, but I didn't film between that, so I'm sorry. But I'll keep you up to date from now on anyway. Um, push that out of the way, done. Next exercise is Pendley rows. I'm going to show you what they are. We're still doing contrast training. We're going to superset that with an uh, upright row, and it's going to be a power movement. Again, three sets of five on three sets of five on both. Let's go. So now we're going to get the bar upright rows. I don't want to see any leg jerking, just straight pulls. I set the upper part of the body. Okay, so we've done our three sets of five on the penalty rows and the upright rows. We're now going to go into shoulder press, supersetting it with pull-ups. So you'll notice a lot of things I do is a push and pull variation. Push is the shoulder press, pull is the um, pull-ups. So I've got 20, 20 kg, 60, 20, 40, 60 kg on the bar, five reps. Let go. Let go. Quick tip, I've said this many a time, when you're doing this, touch your glutes, <gasps> touch your bum, it really helps your core, it helps stabilize your core as well, and your lower back, it takes a lot of the pain and, I'm trying to think of a word, it takes a lot of the, come on John, it takes a lot of the something off something, stress, it takes a lot of the stress off your lower back. Yeah, now we're going to do pull-ups, but it's pull-ups, you've got to try and clap or just pull-ups and a release because this is a hard movement. This is now elastic explosive training. So because we're going to pull up and we're... Is it? Yeah, because you're building force on the way down. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it is ex uh, elastic because we're not staying still. We're pulling, we're flexing before we release. We're building up the elastic energy for our body to then use it and explode. Don't 100% hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Time to bleed. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to some accessory work. We're going to do Chest flies superset by, I believe they're called scarecrows. I'll show you. So, 
The reason why I do incline is because I want a better incline. There's no other reason to. I want a better upper chest is what I should have said. Okay, so scarecrows line up in the middle. It's a great way to hit your rear delts. Cross. Myself in the middle. Like that. Like so. Okay, right, so we've finished a bit of our accessory work. I think ideally, a strength and conditioning coach would probably say, too much volume, or we've done enough for this session. But, I mean, think about it, we've done what, bench? The movements, uh, contrast movements, I wouldn't really count as a big movement, so, like, not fatiguing. So we've done CNS, CNS, camera. We've done bench press, we have done Shoulder press, we have done pendley rows. Pull-ups, wasn't really a draining set. <coughs> Accessory work, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Accessory work, we've done chest flies. Ideally, I'd like to work more chest, but bearing in mind, we're just doing this to kind of, this is strength and power. This is not to gain size. So I'm happy with my size currently. I mean, I wanna get bigger, but you know, anyway. Strength and power is the main goal currently. So now we're gonna move on to the final two exercises, which are gonna be traps and a bit of neck. I'm gonna throw in some shoulder raises as well, so it's gonna be a tri-set. Um, you should work shrugs, I think twice, two sessions a week you should be shrugging. Um, always heavy. Uh, neck and shoulder trap muscles, they're all very, very important when it comes to the tackle situation, especially if you're a forward, is very, very, very important for the scrummaging. Um, neck exercises, I think everyone should do it. Again, important in the tackling situation. Um, if you're in a moor, you're in a ruck. Uh, I don't think it's just for the forwards. Everyone should work the neck exercises. Um, I found some new ones, so I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, usually I do the Swiss ball. This time I'm gonna use a band. Uh, anyway, this is quite a long session. There's a lot of volume in this session. Um, but for me, I don't find it as a problem with recovery, I feel absolutely fine after my sessions the day after, I recover well, I get my food in, I get my sleep in, my rest in, so maybe a trainer or maybe yourself, you might think maybe it's too much, but I'm talking from experience. For me, for myself, I recover fine. I just like to cover everything. I like to work more than needed. Maybe not a good thing for recovery, but I recover fine. F talking from experience, not for everyone, just my personal experience. Let's get on with the exercises. We're gonna do shrugs. Uh, I don't need these. Um, try and stay away from using, um, what they're called. These, I can't think of the name currently. Um, blonde moment. Uh, as much as you can. We wanna work on grip strength. Very important for rugby. So keep with it as much as you can. The grip I'd recommend using is you put your fingers over and then you kind of, over your thumb, and you kind of wrap. So you kind of use your finger as a kind of a hold on the grip, if that makes sense. Anyway, we're gonna do 12 of these. For the grip, I'm just gonna show you closely. My finger. It's going here, if you can see, and my thumb goes over it. My thumb is going over the, as opposed to just doing this, it's harder for the grip. Get your thumb under it and use that as something to hold on to for grip. It was recommended to me by a friend, and it helps you quite a lot with your grip. For the neck, get a band, 
grip it round, grip it round there, back of the head, like so, and we're just going to go from left to right. Do four, oh, we've got ten, ten total, five each side. And then after that, just going to go forward and backwards. Slowly controlled movement. Again, ten on this. And if that's too easy for you, all you've got to do is kind of push yourself further away. So this is harder, come closer. You want it harder, push further away. You want it easier, come closer. Simple. I'm going to finish the tricep with some shoulder raise. Quick tip on the lateral raises, comes down to personal preference. Some people just like to raise side normal. For me, I like to kind of turn internally. So I raise my elbow to the sky and my pinky to the sky and my elbow stays above the weight, like so. I feel more of a contraction in the side delt. Okay, that's the session done. Um, quite a lot of information I gave out this session. I had a lot more I wanted to give out, but I'll space it out over the videos. Otherwise, it's going to be too too complicated. And uh, yeah, I want to make it relevant to the session. So today's video is mainly all about the mobility activation work and the warm up before training. Um, also introducing you to contrast work to help increase your power and explosiveness on the field, which is very important. Um, the different kinds of work you can do, so the RFD and the um, elastic work, elastic explosiveness. Um, I hope that's all clear. If any of you have any questions about anything I mentioned in today's video, drop me a message down below. Um, I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe. We're almost at 5,000. We're at 4,500. So anyone new to the channel, welcome. This is my team. US Mamond. This is my Kiwi friend. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm English by the way, so uh, that's my introduction. And I'll see you on the next video.